Hey there everyone, Cyphrake. Welcome back to playthrough of Etrian Odyssey 3. In this part, we will settle the Vincent dispute. And go farther than the sixth floor, that too. First, let's get this Vincent dispute set uh, over and settled with. I decided the best choice would be to <laughs> just kind of wipe uh, Vincent's skill points and rebuild them. So, in order to do that, you want to reset your person's skill points? Zero, you can do it. You can do it. Eastern Odyssey 3 is nice enough to allow you to reset skill points at the at, at extreme cost of none of your money, just five of your levels. Uh, resting is relatively painless if you do it early. Like, if I had done it in the first round, it would have been relatively painless. If you do it before level five, you don't lose the levels. So, if you, if you feel like you're really screwed up in those first four levels, you can get the, the rest off of free and you don't have to worry about resetting to level 1. However, I had to, I waited till later to <laughs> later and I goofed up later, so this is going to be a little bit more costly to me. But we're going to rest Vincent, he's going to lose like 20 HP for losing 5 levels. And hey, I can redistribute his skill points. All right, let's fix him. First of all, I still want the two market combo. It's kind of necessary. We are going to go for slap awake. So we need this, boom, and we are going to use max waste now. And that leaves us three skill points to do with whatever. That means I can either pour this into more camp mastery or I can just start pouring it into, whoops, into earth bounty. And yeah, there was no question about which choice I was going to make there. Uh, for the next seven levels, we will continue pouring into Earth Bounty, and then after those seven levels go out, uh, about, we are going to, I'm, if we ha still haven't beaten the second stratum boss by that time, I'm going to continue with, uh, Slap Wake to make it heal more, or I can continue with Camp Mastery. It doesn't really matter to me. We'll just waste the seven skill points on <laughs> Earth Bounty, and then I'll decide whether I want to wait for Wildling or not. I'm probably going to wait, because there's a lot of Wildling sub- sub things I can do. So, okay, Vincent's fixed. No more worrying about the Vincent issue, episode, uh, what was it, 18? Episode 18 is totally being edited, and yes, we do have to re-equip him, but it's no big deal. Uh, half armor, kettle, hat, and purple leggings. You missed nothing. So he's now slightly lower leveled, but he's not useless. He's slightly less useless, as in now he gives everyone a little bit of EXP <laughs> instead, and he still serves the basic function that I had him to. It's just that now all of his lullaby levels are gone, and he has no harvestry. Oh well. What you gonna do? Back to the Undersea Grotto, let's continue. I believe we got our uh, quest during the 18th episode as well, so we'll, get, we'll hop right on those as soon as we see the enemies of that kind. It's been a while since I've been in the labyrinth, so I'm gonna be a little etchy, probably. So, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Uh huh. Cut. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. Uh, they they kind of ganged up on Vincent, and because he's five levels lower, his defense is drastically lower as well. So he's actually kind of taking a beating from the monsters. This is no surprise to me because I had to because I rested him in the first place. But that's gonna get on my nerves for a bit, knowing that Vince is a little bit squishier than he used to be. All right, this floor introduces the concepts of currents. As you carefully make your way through the new floor, you notice a mysterious item before you. There's no telling what it might cause with the air flowing along the passages. It's a current. It's very strong. If you step into it, you might be swept away. Take utmost caution. Um. You don't really need to take caution around these, since uh, you hardly ever make the mistake of walking into one of these and getting swept into an FOE or something. That's very rarely the case. I usually just use the arrows to mark them, and eventually when they disappear, hint hint, spoiler alert, they disappear later, uh, the arrows will just remain as a relic, I guess. So... Very easy. This first area it just kind of introduces you to the to the new concept, and then from here on out, you're just straight to the concept. Uh, it just does kind of make it tricky, uh, kind of tricky to map, because I've always been kind of a oh, I can only map what's directly in front of me kind of mapper. But I am a lot better at say mapping than this. Like I know the currents over there. Also, currents always 
Currents will always begin on, usually always begin on an intersection, and it always not end, and usually takes you to another one. It, it's kind of weird. And meet the blue starfish. It's, they're just like the red starfish, except they're blue. And they have an AoE attack. Um, they are weak to slam attacks as usual. Blinding will make them miss like crazy. More so than if you attacked with other enemies. Uh, there is no special drops. It just has, it's like a Cilia Crab. It has a rare drop if you kill it enough. Now that I feel that that is explained, let's fight one and see how it goes. Why am I using attacks? <laughs> I just lectured you guys on a previous episode that you shouldn't have to be worrying about the stars anymore. I'm like, wait, now I'm not following my own advice. Now I feel like a hypocrite. Hey, and that might have been the wrong word. Oh well. The blue starfish have more HP and they get blue cores, which are slightly more valuable. Did someone level up? I wasn't paying attention. Yes, yes, of course people leveled up. What do you need? I'm thinking Monarch March. Yes, I am also- I am really thinking Monarch March. Here, have some Monarch March. Kiara, what do you need? Uh, let's see. We're working on- oh, that's right, we're working on our way to part of the refresh. Awesome. Get to work on that. Uh, Zara, you're fine. Vincent, you're fine. Alright. Uh, also, Vincent will probably be getting- a, sneaking in a few levels where our other characters- would take a little bit longer. This is, of course, because he's level 14 now. And he kind of needs the ability to level up faster. So we're kind of graceful for it. Uh, there is a treasure chest around that corner. I am not completely... <laughs> not completely zoned about, out about my experience of this game. It's just been a while. Ah, uh, yes, these FOEs. There's, like, three of them in a chain. Uh, yeah, yeah. These are all the same FOE. It's not like they're gonna mix them up on you. Like, if there's, like, sets of F FOEs, like, ne right next to each other, they're usually the same thing. Uh, I believe they're going in a clockwise circle. So, just note that. You, c you can note it, but of course I've played this game many times and don't need to really note it. It's just, like, there's three or four of them and they go around in a circle. Not that hard to, to understand. And I know some people don't have the exact memory that I do, except the way I memorize me uh, enemy patterns is that these enemy patterns always take place on certain floors with certain enemies, and it's usually you're unable to mix them up. There are a few instances where this is different, and of course I will uh, adapt, adapt with that and mark them appropriately if FOE start using the same strategies. So, as I said before, it's really, really hard to mix up FOEs. <laughs> Since most of them are separated by stratums anyway, you're usually not going to run to the same FOE on a different stratum. I don't remember if there's even any exceptions to that, and I just remember we are not using Harvestry on this team anymore. Kind of bites, because now I have to make a farmer team, but rest assured I'll do most of my farm team off-screen, except to show you when I'm getting the items the first time so you know what the items are. So that's how item gathering is going to work. It's not. It's no longer going to be Vincent picks up a few every time I visit. It's going to be I'm taking a farmer team and whenever I need to get items, I go get them. You can't reach this treasure chest until we remove the uh, currents, but it's nice to know that it exists. There's also a uh, shortcut up there that we'll get into later. Much, much later. Get around these FOEs, just follow them. It, it's not a hard concept. They don't come around and chase you. Don't worry, they're not aggressive. Hey look, more starfish. Um, well, we haven't run into the set before, so we'll just kind of fight it out. If you're having to prioritize targets, the blue starfish is definitely the one I'd want to take out first. It, there's no rocket science there. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't want to shoot a blind fire star, because it's not, they're not weak to it. They wouldn't die to it. So just kind of gang up on the blue starfish and see where the other attacks go. Uh-huh. Yeah, perfect strategy. Not like Raukau strategy. Nothing like Raukau strategy. Wow, it took everyone to just... Okay, fine. Attack, attack, you line heal, you basic attack. We'll just gang up on that one, have Zara kill it next turn. Bit, no big deal. It's kind of basic strategies I've been using all the time. Jeez, gang up on Zara. Why are they ganging up on Zara more? Why is this thing still only relatively alive? Okay, change of plans. You... Attack that, you attack this, and 
Sarah, hopefully you'll follow up and kill it. There. What? Oh, right. They're weak to slam attacks. That's right, now I remember. So that totally didn't go as planned. Kinda did, kinda didn't. I wasn't thinking of doing 112 with, uh, Kiera. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Man, what's with me and not paying attention? Wow. I thought I was weak enough to kill him, but apparently I wasn't. Ah. <sighs> Wow, I really haven't done this in a while. Hey, red bones. Sweet. Well, uh, from now on, if we run into starfish ones, I'll probably cut them out. We, you've already seen the blue starfish use its icicle skill. It's really annoying. All that jazz. Also, I'm not as uh, keenly aware about shortcut locations. But I don't think we've run into any yet, other than the one I mentioned earlier. Alright, walk into this current, I'll take you right around here. You want to go back home, you can just take this current back. Going home is for wussies, so we're not going home. Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of relatively painless to go through here, even without shortcuts, though. And I'll check mark, please, and I'll know that. Alright. Up, up. I mapped wrong. I'm getting really pro at mapping wrong recently. That goes that way. There's a corner there. Kind of, just kind of figure. You can just kind of look at it until, oh, hey, it's going to turn there. And door. All right, camp spot. There is something important about this camp spot is that when we get to the other end, that the entry to this room is a one way. The shortcut into this room is one way. There is a shortcut that leads straight into this camp room, but it's one way. It's right here, I think. And if it's not right there, of course, I'm going to fix that later. But I think it's right there. I knew it was... And I know it's not directly associated. But it's one way. So when you see that shortcut kind of thing, it's like, Oh my god, hey, look, a shortcut straight to the campsite. That's amazing. It's one way. Yeah, kind of jerk with that. But it's better than, a, it, it's better than having no shortcut there at all. And if you really need to get to that campsite, you have accessibility to it, so. Who's complaining? I'm not. And, <laughs> except for the first time I played this game, and I thought that was a two-way, it's like, oh, hey, I can do this, and it's like, nope! Go walk all the way back around. And here's the statue that we're gonna give the gift to. But not yet. We'll get to that later, because the thing about that statue is that it heals you a lot. Once you uh, witness that event, it will heal you a lot, so it, it just... Uh, use your TP a lot, and next time you need a refill, step by the statue and finish that quest. Just don't do it instantly, otherwise you're kind of gonna kind of waste its healing potential. And we have the Great Hermit in a fight for the first time. That's amazing. Why are they targeting Zara so much? Jeez! Okay. How to handle this. I want more flawless shells. Red starfish, kind of relative to plainless. So we'll have Kiara and Gandra take their turns beating up the starfish, and we'll have everyone else start ganging up on the hermits. Sounds like the perfect plan. Charge tactic, totally optional, but we're going to do it anyway. I believe we'll some we'll eventually get to the point where Kiara can just one-shot. Because she's doing 95 right now. That's a lot. P.S., that's a lot. Um, Kiara will take care of that. You just keep spamming. No, you use an ethric charge. That should be neato. And you start attacking the hermit. Alright. Just gang up on that thing, and you finish it off with the ice. You attack that. That went relatively painlessly. <laughs> and Amina's parry is amazing. Our magic parry, I wasn't reading. Um, for course. It didn't give me its flawless shell, but you can't can't win them all. As I like to say, can't win them all. As I said, even with Max Waste Knot, these items are not 100%. So... Useful to know that even if... <laughs> it's still going to be relatively harder without Waste Knot, by the way. It's just... Even with Waste Knot, sometimes the items just don't like popping up. And his shell is one instance. However, I believe if you kill him, 
as I said with like status effects like poison, because those are generally harder to inflict, he gives them more likely. Um, what else? Not many shortcuts around this area, which is different from the rest of this game, <laughs> where it's uh, shortcuts galore. What are you? You are also a take point. Of course, the other spot was a take point, and we're all on the same floor. Of course, this is going to be a take point since it's not the last floor. My common sense has failed me today. That's amazing. Also, I have noticed that when I edit these videos, if I use Windows Movie Maker, I can make it 480p relatively easy. Also making the file kind of small. And I was kind of screwing around with that in earlier episodes. So that's why some episodes have 360, some will have 480. It's that the ones with 480 were edited using Windows Movie Maker, but it would put these huge black margins on the side, so that kind of scared me. Uh, while getting accustomed to the Undersea Labyrinth, you spot a girl up ahead. Ah, it's good to see you again. Congratulations on arriving at the second stratum. The girl called Olympia addresses you cheerfully. If you have come this far, you have orders to search for the deep city, correct? Olympia slowly looks around the forest. To be honest, I've entered to the second stratum numbers of time already. Did I just say already? <laughs> I found this, um, clues regarding the deep city, but I have my own reasons for remaining silent. But you're trustworthy, strong. I think I can share my clues with you. Olympia then turns slowly and walks away from you. Uh, I want to find the Colossus shoes. Intrigued, follow behind her, and she tells you, Look here, I'll show you the clues I speak of. Go that way. Ominous music. Go that way. <laughs> yeah. Good couple there, game. Give us the ominous music. Alright, the path she's pointing is long blue road that stretches as far as you can see. It has this way our currents that seem to be vestiges... What does that word even mean? I'm, I'm kind of sleepy, so I probably do know what this word means, but I don't at the moment. That's long word number six. When this place was once emerged, I learned that a hidden stair is supposedly past these currents, one which leads to the deep city. Olympia then shakes her head, but there are countless dangerous fish looking that passage that prevent anyone from getting there. A vast number of guilds investigate, but none have returned. The girl falls silent, waiting for the implications of her words to sink in. When you turn around as if to encourage her, she looks up and continues her speech. I am positive a way to the deep city lies beyond here. I'd like to ask that you investigate. And Olympia's expression seems solemn, but it seems she has told you all that she knows. You can and you can ask her. You can you can inquire her more, but she looks away and slowly faces the wall. It's clear that she has nothing more to say. You decide to incur explanations. So guys, next time on Let's Play Etrian Odyssey 3, playthrough of Etrian Odyssey, what have you, I'm going to continue, I'm going to cut the video off here so that these don't go on so long and I can kind of set the length. Thanks for watching, bye.